Recently, an off-duty police officer from Kalamazoo, Michigan, was visiting Canada. When Walt Walra got home, he wrote a letter to the editor of the Calgary Herald, where he was visiting. In his letter, Walt explained that he and his wife were walking in a park north of the city. Walra said two men asked twice, in a very aggressive tone, whether the couple had been to the Calgary Stampede yet, a huge rodeo, all sorts of horses and bulls and all that kind of stuff. Just, it's a big, big party. They were disrespectful and had a menacing manner, he recalls. He says he ignored the two men at first, but when they moved closer, he responded, Gentlemen, I have no need to talk with you. Goodbye. They continued walking in different directions, and that was that. To the editor, Walt writes that a man ought to have the right to protect himself in these situations, and he felt odd not having a firearm available. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ they did not pull a weapon of some sort, but rather concluded it was in their best interest to leave us alone. Would we not expect a uniformed officer to pull his or her weapon to intercede in a life or death encounter? To protect self or another? Why then should the expectation be lower for a citizen of Canada or a visitor? Wait, I know, he says. It's because in Canada, only the criminals and the police carry handguns. Uh, I'm sort of confused about what Walt means there. Of course, he's looking through an American haze when he says that. Uh, what I am clear on is that Americans are afraid. The amount of fear, or the scope, or how many people are afraid, is it makes it very difficult to define this. Um, I know I'm kind of walking a fine line here. But uh, one thing is for sure, that a portion of your population is extremely afraid. Again, this is difficult for me to, to quantify, but, uh, but I'll try. As a nation, you exhibit a certain behavior. Now, as individuals, which, this now, taking this type of measurement, it has to be a more accurate measure. Uh, and basically... I don't see any difference between you and me, yeah, an American and a Canadian. Not too much different. Maybe the accent. Maybe I, I say house and a boot and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you say things funny too. So, so that's all right. Uh, you know, we, we, we're loved by people uh, and people love us. So basically, we're, we're the same. And I think that uh, with the interactions that I'm having with my, my subscribers, which are American, uh, for the most part, they are, uh, they're just like me. And what, what I've done is to, to quantify this, to make it a little more simple, is I've, I've cut your, your nation's population into thirds. Uh, there's 331 million of you, so I would suggest uh, 110 million just like me. Uh, 110 million that are in the middle. They could see the light and, and understand that there's nothing to be afraid of, or they could fall to the dark side with the lower third. And the, the people in the lower third, in my opinion, would be the Westboro Church group, uh, the Chick-fil-A's, and anybody that thinks like that. Uh, and uh, perhaps some of your politicians as well. They're uh, terrible people, in my opinion. Some of them. Some are good. Some aren't. Uh, you know that as well as I do. They're still in power, though, and that bothers me a, a whole lot. You guys are getting screwed big time. Now, getting back to Walt's story, I'll try and explain things, uh, how things are done here in Canada. We aren't afraid if people walk up to us, okay? Um, we don't wish we had a gun if someone speaks with us, all right? Life as you see it is not accurate, okay? There's nothing to be afraid of, nothing at all. I am i don't know for sure, but what these guys were doing, I mean, who walks up to somebody else and says, hey, have you been to the Calgary Stampede yet? Hey, have you been to the new ice cream store? Who does that? Probably someone affiliated with a uh, stampede or a a rodeo or an ice cream store, I'm figuring out. Huh? What do you think? Does that sound too nutty for you? 
I think that it does. You think that they're going to pull a weapon on you. That's, oh, they're going to ask me if I've been to a rodeo, and then they're going to kill me and my wife. That must have been what you were thinking. I, I don't know what the hell you were thinking. I find it so offensive that you need you thought you needed a gun, but and you bring this attitude to my country. That really bothers me a whole bunch, and this is why I'm making this. You, you guys are welcome to come on up here anytime you like. You just leave that crappy attitude back in your country, that fear doesn't belong here, and you leave your guns back there as well. Now, I was in the military, and I was a range officer, and I shot weapons, I shot guns, uh, five or six thousand rounds every weekend uh, for about twelve years, and, and I don't have any problems with guns at all. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with a gun. Don't don't think that uh, I'm anti-gun because I'm not. I'm anti-fear and I'm anti-crappy attitude is what I am. So getting back to these two fellows that walked up to you and asked you about a if you'd been to the Calgary Stampede or not. What the, this is what. They were trying to do okay what they do is they have ambassadors that walk around the city and the parks and they say things to people like hey have you been to the stampede yet in a disrespectful or menacing tone that doesn't fit with a stampede ambassador but that's okay you are afraid and you were alarmed that two males would approach you that's fine that's okay you, you can feel that way it's completely wrong. You're the laughing stock of this country, by the way. Um, we just think it's so idiotic that you feel that you needed to be armed. It's just so stupid. But you don't see that. Hopefully by the end of this... Um, well, no, there's no hope for you, Walter Walra. But that's okay. That's a, you're a police officer. You are a person in, in charge of authority. You have authority. And, and getting to your, let's talk about your, your police dumb, why don't we? Uh, you are especially trained in spotting, uh, well, just looking at a scene and, and observing everything. And you are, uh, you have experience with drug people, I would think, in your line of work as a police officer in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm sure you run across the odd uh, meth head or whatever and uh, I'm sure you deal with normal people on a daily basis as well you know the difference between a normal person and a meth head you know the difference between an employee asking you a question or an ambassador asking you a question and someone trying to rob you you understand that don't you apparently not but that's okay you're back in America now and and things are as they should be man oh man it, it bothers me that's all I can say is that it bothers me that you think that we should have the same attitude as you. Why aren't, why isn't everybody outraged that we are not allowed to carry guns? Says Walt to the Calgary Herald. Well, Walt, we don't need guns. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. We know, you know what? I'll bet you if there, if these two guys walked up to you in a park and they did have ill intentions, they did want to hurt you and your wife. You're in Canada, pal. If these two scumbags wanted to do you harm, I bet you the people around, uh, there's no actually betting, I guarantee the people around you in that park would come to your aid. I know they would. I know they would. There's nothing to be afraid of. I know that nothing is going to happen to me, and if something does happen to me, I'm pretty sure the people on the sidewalk or in the park or in the store or whatever are going to take care of me because I'm going to take care of them if something bad happens. That's called socialism. And don't be so afraid of it because that's how your teachers are paid and policemen and firemen are paid. Ah, oh, man. You guys need to do some thinking. You guys need to do some soul searching. I like America. I like what you have to offer. You're smart. You invent stuff, but you're afraid and your government has you running like you wouldn't believe. Please wake up. Um... Don't be a typical American when you travel. When you come to this country, I want you to cross the border and then let it out. Oh, finally, finally, I'm really free because I'm not afraid. And I'm in Canada where things aren't scary. 
We have polar bears. We have got moose that'll come and kill you in a heartbeat. We've got all sorts of crazy stuff up here. <laughs> At least we're not Australia. But let me tell you, you got to leave that crap at home. There's no place for it here. There's no place for it at your home either. I'm just talking about how I feel, okay? This is how I feel, and I feel offended that Walt would write us a letter telling us how stupid we are because only the cops and criminals have weapons in this country. We don't need the weapons. The cops can have them. A Bowling for Columbine, Michael Moore, um, illustrated this quite clearly, I think. Lead stories on American news is um, deadly escalators, look out, uh, trouble and danger lurks everywhere, get a gun. The lead story in Sarnia, Ontario, up here in Canada, <laughs> was new speed bumps. This is the first story that they're talking about on local news. New, spe or the new speed bumps at installed at the new mall. That's what we talk about. Oh, we can't go fast in the mall anymore. Well, the kids will be safe. That's a good thing. That's what we talk about up here. And did you see that polar bear on Main Street? Hoy, he was in that house in a boot all over the place. So, gentlemen and ladies of the United States of America, I like you. I truly do. I talk with you all the time. You're just like me but you're afraid. Some of you are afraid. And you're afraid of gay people. And you're afraid of black people. And you're afraid of getting killed by gay black people. I don't know. No need to be afraid, guys. I know you have an opinion about this. I know I'm going to lose subscribers over this. Uh, I'm probably not as eloquent or uh, able to express myself because it's it's very difficult to to figure out what's happening but I can tell you and I'll take my glasses off for this part that um, you're good people you're the most generous nation on the planet uh, when something goes wrong in the world and someone asks you to give money you do it because you have the money and it's your responsibility and my responsibility to give what we have to the people that need it. Oh, a little bit of socialism going on there. All I have to say in closing is thank you very much. I like America. Please don't be afraid though. Okay? Let me know in the comments what you think about this. What do you think about how I feel? Um, I want to interact with you. I want you to make me understand. Maybe I'm completely wrong and I deserve to be put in my place. Well, I welcome that because education is the goal here. I want to be edumacated and um, if you can do that, fine. I, you know, I've done a lot of research and I think I am pretty well versed on, on a bunch of stuff, but the psyche or the amount of fear, um, that's kind of puzzling to me. So if you can answer some questions or add some thoughts that maybe I've missed or I'm not thinking about or something along those lines, please let me know in the comments uh, below. And oh, nuts, I just knocked over a thing. <laughs> Crap. Shit. All right, well, I have to go clean this up. It's a bottle of Canadian beer, okay? And it's foaming, but it fell onto a plate, so...